now that we've looked at the calendar, I'm going to go back to the home page and kind of wrap up my expectations for you on that home page. If we look at the buttons across the top of the screen, you have a syllabus button, a schedule button, and a modules button, which we've already talked about. There's also a grades button, and you'll see that there's a grades tab on the left-hand side as well. That takes you to your personal gradebook. Um, I'm not going to click on that because I don't want to show anybody anybody else's gradebook, but I do want to note that the grade that you see is accurate at all times for the assignments that have been submitted. The way that the course is structured is that every module is worth a certain percentage of your grade. For example, uh, module six, I believe, is worth 20% of your grade. And if you haven't started module six, it might say that you have a 97% in the class. But if you miss the first assignment in module six and you get a zero on it, if that's worth 20% of your grade, all of a sudden your 97 is going to turn into a 77. Um, I'll explain that more when, we, when we're talking about grades and how you're going to submit things, but just keep in mind it's accurate only to what you've currently submitted and each module is worth a certain percentage. And so if we've only completed modules 1, 2, and 3 and your grade is listed as a 99%, it's only 99% for those three modules. If you were to submit nothing between then and the end of the semester, so you didn't submit anything in modules 4, 5, and 6, if those modules were worth 20% each, your grade would go down 60%. Okay, there's also a help button. Um, I think it's really important for online learners to, one, be self-sufficient in the sense that you will try to troubleshoot things on your own, but also you need to be willing to ask for help. And so I've created this help page that you can use if you need help. And so if you need help for anything, click on the help button and then read through till you find what you're looking for. And so the first thing says, I'm your instructor and I'm here to help you and I will help you in any way I can. Um, so contact me first. Come to my online office hours, come to my on-campus office hours, or just shoot me an email through the Canvas inbox. There's also help if you're having trouble with the platform. If it's not a problem with our course, but it's a problem like you can't figure out something in Canvas. If it's something to do with the college, that's number three there. If you're like, my, my math class is requiring me to make this ePortfolio and I have no idea what I'm doing, there's help here and you can click on the ePortfolio option um, under number three. I've also linked to resources that Adobe has for Photoshop on uh, number four. And then number five to me is kind of not the most important one, but the one that is not used as much as it should be. Um, because you're taking this as a class, you're part of a community, your class is your community, you can always ask your peers for help. You can, um, you'll see that when we are submitting coursework, I have you submit it in discussion threads so that you can see what other students are working on. If you see that John submitted something and it's awesome and you can't figure out how to do what he did, you can always respond to his post and say, hey John, how did you do that? I think it's really cool and I'm struggling in X, Y, and Z. And John may be logged in at that time and be able to give you an instant answer, whereas I might not be able to respond to you for another 12 hours. So don't be afraid to ask your classmates for help or to say, hey, that's really cool. How did you do that? Because most students are willing to share. If, if they figured out how to do something really cool, they're usually willing to share and show you how they did that really cool thing.